Ministry and MS Teams. Once you're given the floor, please unraise your hand by clicking the same icon again so we don't, um, uh, you know, assume you need the floor again. And when you speak, please name your institution as well as your name or whoever you're affiliated with and please keep your verbal interventions, uh, you know, short and concise. We want a dialogue, but also uh, let's be respectful of others as well. If we have more time at the end, of course, we can continue. And if time does not permit, you can also use a chat. Personally, I prefer people to speak, at, you know, with the chat, but I mean, we will also try our best to 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 respond, I think. so. That's just to, to, to set the stage. Um, I was just going to make welcome remarks, but I thought maybe it's helpful just to put up a very few slides to kind of guide us because there's a lot of stuff that has been going on. So I'm going to just share my screen um, and sh speak to a few items. OK, so I think you can see the screen. Emil, can you see my screen? Yes, Serena, we do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So just to set the stage a little bit, um, as you know, we work on environment statistics and have been embarking on climate change statistics as well as uh, in collaboration with UNEC that has been working on this also for quite a long time. Um, and we want to see what, what are the relationships. and. Um, and the role of the National Statistical Offices. Again, as I said, many of you are not part of National Statistical Offices or not even part of government. So um, we hope that this helps you to understand the kind of uh, work we are doing. So environment studies are very similar to climate change statistics in our opinion. They synthesize data from all different types of sources. They have a lot of institutions and stakeholders uh, from the government and there's an extreme need for collaboration to avoid duplication of resources and, um, and energy here. Um, there's a lot of data, it's an overwhelming volume of data in various institutions, so there's really a need to, to come together and coordinate. And there are very different types of users and also they need different types of environment statistics as well as climate change statistics at different levels of aggregation, for example, local, national, regional, uh, and also the depth of information varies. So the role of national statistical offices, I mean, they um, typically NSOs have a small, relatively smaller production in a role in production of environmental or climate change information. However, we recognize that this is starting to change and um, we will be talking about this during the um, presentations as well as in the discussions. And NSOs can contribute to and coordinate environment statistics and climate change statistics because they have the mandate to produce official statistics as well as uh, have the role to coordinate statistics in the national statistical system. So if statistics or data are produced by other institutions, uh, which is very well the case in these fields, and NSOs can help to coordinate and make these official so that they can represent the status or the state of the country. And official statistics have a very key role in informing the public. And I think this is important because with the plethora of data out there, NSOs uh, still have a very important role and they should be promoted as they contribute to improving information quality as well as dissemination, but also the solid nature, you know, behind statistical rigor. And NSOs also have a strong capacity to deal with in different types of um, disciplines and comprehensive information flows. Uh, among the different institutions. So I think that's another strong reason, you know, to have them uh, involved and uh, collaborate and coordinate. So this slide is just to show that it's been a decade long process, much more actually than a decade. We started back in 2008 uh, and then uh, we calmed down because at that time the political nature of climate change was still very controversial. So back in 2016, um, the, we brought this issue back to the Statistical Commission and my colleague Emil will go in much more detail. I just wanted to set the stage a little bit here. Um, what are important here is just the, the mandates from the Statistical Commission in uh, 2016 and 18 to embark on this work, as well as the pilot testing of the UNECE set of indicators in 2017-18, which I mentioned before, they have a lot of experience and knowledge in this field. Um, 
dealing with a different group of countries. So this is what our our role was to try to globalize this set of uh, indicators so that we could cater to the needs of countries with less developed statistical systems as well, because that is what we deal with at the uh, global level. With the ECE testing that took place a few years ago, what was the main issues were um, that uh, some of the indicators were not applicable or relevant, and there was a need to adjust them to some different sub-areas or to indicate as pertinent to developing countries, in particular in the area of adaptation and, and, and um, vulnerability. And also there were some methodological issues, as we know, but of course those are be, have been ironed out since 2017-18 by, by ECE. And I would invite them to speak at some point just to take the floor and help, you know, contribute in the discussion. And the plan is that the global set is expected to be submitted to the 53rd session of the Statistical Commission for adoption. And uh, we hope it will benefit all, all, all countries and the international climate change reporting process. And uh, on collaboration, you know, we also got the mandate to strengthen the link between statistics and policy. So UNSD is working very closely with UNFCCC to develop the set through a lot of different types of joint um, events and activities. Okay. So um, uh, next uh, slide, just to talk a little bit about what we call methodology. So the global set is uh, going to be a statistical framework based on the IPCC framework and the FDS. The FDS is the framework for the development of environment statistics. Some of you are very familiar with it. Um, so uh, if you have a look in there, you'll see what we have uh, developed as a chapter on, on climate change. And countries and organizations have been very involved uh, in during a pilot uh, survey that was carried out last year. And we will be conducting a global consultation in a couple of months. And this global consultation of the indicators will also have the underlying data for the meta for the metadata for the indicators. And here I want to stress a very important point about complementarity. And we really encourage this to the extent possible that to have complementarity between the global set and regional national sets of climate indicators to the extent it is possible. For example, the ECE set, we have carefully reviewed it and we have included um, as many as we can uh, as appropriate into the a global set so that we don't have duplication and you know different wording and things and and we really have tried to harmonize as much as we can and as i said in the beginning we know there are so many other organizations international regions that have very specialized activities and focus in the area of climate change and we recognize them all and we are including a lot of their work and engaging with them at the moment very uh, closely and bilaterally wmo and um, the Convention on Biological Diversity, um, FAO, et cetera, et cetera. We are working you know, separately with them to try to bring all their very detailed inputs and ex excellent contributions to our work. Okay, then uh, to talk a little bit about coordination. So again, I said in the beginning, NSOs are very crucial here to help to co contribute and coordinate climate change statistics. Um, what we have uh, noted is that a working group at national level should be established uh, that cover both environment and climate change and a couple of examples are Tanzania and Grenada that we are aware of that have a group that covers both and I believe also um, in uh, Mexico they have uh, I forgot exactly the name of it, but uh, I think we have some colleagues from Mexico. They can also help us later. Um, also, uh, establishing a dedicated unit or section in an NSO, that is something quite new. As far as I know personally, I think uh, it's Cameroon and Ireland that I'm aware of that actually have separate or, or you know, units called environment climate change. So this, that's very innovative and encouraged. And then uh, NSOs, I think, of Finland and Turkey, and I think Mauritius, if I'm not mistaken, completely also are the reporting entities for emission inventories to UNFCCC. So um, others, I'm sure, work with their other uh, institutions, but these ones are directly reporting. 
Uh, then I just have two slides, I think, yes. And uh, the next one is on data collection. Um, and here, just to touch on the fact that formalized data collection is really important, uh, such as through censuses and surveys. And questions on climate change can be added to existing censuses or surveys or um, develop specialized surveys. Uh, as we know, in the case of uh, Nepal, when they did a climate change um, impact uh, survey, and we have Sushil with us from Nepal, um, who can also contribute. And another thing I think is really important that to make the connection, you know, we, uh, our section collects waste and water statistics independently of climate change. But, uh, you know, um, as I know, uh, Sandra from IPCC will uh, mention that waste statistics is very important as you can get information on as, as you can estimate uh, methane emissions from, from that. And so we're trying to show also the linkages. So, for example, um, building materials, which is normally something that gets from the housing census, can be really important to determine vulnerability. Uh, so we want to try to build these linkages and, and you know, demonstrate them. And then just to say there's a growing number of NSOs that are producing separate reports uh, so far. It's when I say growing, I have to be careful because so far I think what we know is Jamaica, the Statistical Institute of Jamaica, and now Tanzania, which Ruth will speak uh, a lot about in her presentation. They have produced a national climate change statistics report. And I think this is a very good sign uh, that NSOs are taking on this um, endeavor and we really um, you know, encourage that. Okay, so uh, last slide I have is on capacity development. Again, uh, to set the stage, um, you know, countries are, are working hard on this, but we also understand that resources are needed. And um, I know there are some examples, I think Ruth will speak on Tanzania, where uh, they were able to get some assistance from GSZ and UNEP and others. Um, there are also other potential donors, such as the Green Climate Fund, and many, many others that can be tapped for support. So um, we are very pleased today in this side event. There are so many other types of institutions, some of them we don't know directly, um, but I hope that they get engaged and countries also can work closer with these institutions to um, maybe receive some kind of uh, support as well. And um, finally, the importance of local consultants, I think, is there, you know, to, to help to develop the uh, GHG inventories because um, this will encourage national ownership and involvement in, in, in this process. And again, uh, working closely with the NSO will be very, very helpful. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. I would like to now, uh, let me stop sharing my screen. I would like to introduce the... Um, speakers and then we could we could uh, start so i think i'll start with emil right emil is going to speak about the global set of climate change statistics and indicators and emil is ivanov is working in our uh, section environment statistics section and he's an ecologist uh, with a background on environmental and geospatial science and he joined UNSD to work on environment and climate change statistics. And he has a very long experience in developing land and ecosystem statistics and accounts in Europe. So Emil, please go ahead. You have 15 minutes. I mean, please, we'll, as we said, we'll try to keep it within 10 to 12 and then have a couple of um, uh, minutes left for immediate questions and uh, clarification. And we will have a discussion session at the end. OK, over to you, Emil. Thank you very much, Rina. Uh, could you confirm if you see my uh, yes. slides? Yes. Thank you. Good morning, uh, dear colleagues. Good afternoon and good evening as well. I'm going to complement Rina's uh, remarks with more um, focus on the methodology of our work, uh, explaining the processes with multiple contributions from um, a lot of partners. And I will also explain with some examples the substantive developments along the global set. The key point that I want to raise is what we plan to do next. So as Rina mentioned, there has been more than a decade long process of uh, substantive developments, which the need for which was raised with the two con uh, conferences in 2008. Uh, a key substantive step was including climate change as a cross-cutting team in chapter five of the FDS, followed by testing the EC indicators. And uh, I would say culminating with the active uh, support and uh, participation of UNS, 
UNFCCC since 2017 uh, by uh, having joint um, events, joint reports to the Statistical Commission, and also by participating in our expert group. So we have submitted uh, three reports to the Statistical Commission already. The first one, as Rina mentioned, was in 2016, when we received the mandate to develop a global set such that can address the needs of all countries. Uh, the second one was in 2018, when um, it was recommended to pay particular attention to strengthening the link between science and, and policy. The most recent one, which we uh, developed together with EC and UNFCCC explains all the uh, current activities and uh, a few of them I uh, will also uh, explain in more details next. So the methodology of the global set is based on three main ingredients I would emphasize. The broad structure is laid down by um, the um, IPCC assessments the fourth assessment report suggested to have uh, five uh, science policy areas, drivers, impacts, including evidence of climate change, vulnerability, mitigation, and adaptation. From the, FDG, from the SDGs, we have followed basically um, uh, the methodolo methodology approach as well. The way indicators are uh, first proposed, defined, structured with sub-indicators. In our understanding, the sub-indicators correspond basically to statistics needed to calculate the indicators. And those, we have uh, applied many of them as included in the basic set of environment statistics in the FDS, for which also the manual helps with um, um, suggesting details and metadata uh, where applicable. So, um, to reiterate, the objective is to develop a set which is useful for all countries, ensuring in particular that the needs of the countries with less developed statistical systems are well taken into account. The work started with a review of a bottom-up review of multiple sources from about 130 countries. So sources include submissions to UNFCCC, also environmental reports and studies, etc., from which thousands of examples of statistics and indicators were dug out. Those were consequently processed and consolidated into about 134 indicators, which were included in an initial uh, set. Sorry. Um, since the link between statistics and policy was so emphasized, we took care to uh, have those link links as explicit as possible by uh, listing the corresponding articles from the Paris Agreement and the reporting mod modalities from the Katowice package to each indicator. As mentioned already, SDGs, uh, statistics from the FDS, indicators from the Sendai framework and from the ECE list were included uh, as such, where we uh, um, recognized that uh, they apply the best. However, further statistical uh, guidance and frameworks from um, uh, FAO, the Convention for Combating Desertification and CBD were also carefully examined to, to, to include the, need, the needed statistics, even though they require f further work. As also mentioned, complementarity with regional um, uh, work was um, taken care of, including the EC, but also other examples as from Eurostat. Another important criteria for selecting indicators was making sure that metadata can be <coughs> developed, excuse me, and uh, taking care that the, those five IPCC areas that I mentioned would be covered in at least some balanced way. The expert group uh, has been actively contributing to uh, uh, developing the global set throughout this process. At its sixth meeting in 2019, it was agreed that we conduct a pilot survey. However, that was preceded, preceded by uh, an expert review to which several countries and organizations provided feedback, thanks to which we could develop um, those initial set into a set ready for the pilot. The pilot was launched early last year and it was addressed to 42 countries and 30 international organizations. 
from which 17 countries responded, seven developed and 10 developing. Another 12 developing countries initiated, but could not send us um, the result. Um, while, of course, the pandemic uh, interrupted and prolonged this uh, process a lot, we have been um, following up and helping countries, especially those who needed most help. And while waiting for more responses, we also set up a small advisory group uh, with um, experts and several countries who helped us tremendously to process the feedback received so far and to move further with restructuring and consolidating the set. Other important conclusions from the pilot survey were that uh, most of the indicators are applicable to at least some countries. Quite a few of them need further work. A very key point was that uh, there is a need to clarify what's the difference between indicators and statistics, since in the initial set they were sort of mixed. So a major uh, work has taken place since then. We prepared a new structure in which the indicators and statistics were presented separately side by side, and that was presented to the seventh expert group last year in November. Other uh, recommendations were raised that we include more references to the SEA, which was done by including more EC indicators clearly based on SEA and also including uh, SEA guidance in, in, in metadata. Data availability was raised as a big concern for uh, quite a few indicators in the areas of adaptation and vulnerability that we have addressed also with uh, uh, the help of a couple of consultants who are looking at more details of data availability and also data needs uh, in CARICOM seats and also some African countries. Quite a few indicators were also assessed as being totally out of the mandate of uh, the um, national statistics systems. Like, for example, um, um, biodiversity related, meteorology, hydrology related. So for those, we are following up with the special agencies to produce the needed uh, details, definitions and metadata. And not to forget to emphasize is that there is inadequate capacity, in, mostly in the developed countries sorry, the developing countries to uh, compile the indicators, even those uh, who were assessed as being quite relevant to them. Further conclusions from last year's expert uh, group that I would like to emphasize is that this uh, matrix based uh, uh, structure presenting indicators and related statistics side by side um, was quite appreciated as being more transparent, transparent in terms of what you what you need to compile the indicators, but also it's sort of flexible by allowing also the countries with less developed uh, um, capacity to select and uh, develop those indicators or statistics which are most applicable. Of course, it was emphasized that we need to work further with UNFCCC, both substantively and also in processes, including to deliver further capacity. And um, as for the role of NSOs, it was emphasized that there are two aspects of it, of it. One is as provider of activity data as needed for um, inventories of um, GHGs. And another is that NSOs can also take the lead and coordinate in um, the other areas that I mentioned earlier, as for example, vulnerability and adaptation, which currently we think that are the least developed statistically. During the expert group, we also had uh, group work um, as a result of which um, another few important decisions were uh, raised. Um, for example, the areas of adaptation and vulnerability were assessed as most important to small island developed um, developing states, other developing and least developed countries. And those are the areas that are least uh, ready for um, uh, producing internationally comparable statistics. On the other hand, the areas of drivers and mitigations, mitigation were assessed as uh, more important to the developed countries, and those uh, have better developed uh, statistics and indicators already. It was also stressed that we need to pay attention, more attention to the applicable uh, SDGs in the global set. 
So what is the global set? As I mentioned, the structure includes indicators and statistics side by side, which is then complemented with key metadata in a spreadsheet. The set contains the five areas which I listed earlier, drivers, impact, mitigation, adaptation, and vulnerability. Those have 41 broader topics divided into 140 indicators. About a third of those indicators require further work. And you need uh, 253 statistics to estimate those indicators. Having the key data, uh, the key uh, metadata fields allows to um, explore some interesting case. For example, we have uh, introduced here six uh, categories of data collection methods from the FDS. And if you try to contrast data which comes from NSOs, for example, uh, through censuses and surveys against data which comes from outside, for example, monitoring systems and remote sensing, we see an interesting outcome that, sorry, a lot of the suggested statistics uh, come from those uh, NSOs collection methods. And interestingly as well, most of them are in the area of uh, vulnerability, but also throughout the other areas as well. Of course, most of them uh, refer to um, statistics related to population, activities, households, etc., but a few environmental ones as well. And we have been exploring further uh, with the help of our consultants that uh, some of those will help to define also the statistics and indicators which are currently quite challenging to define. For example, those vulnerable buildings that can be further uh, defined by looking at building materials responses in the population censuses or household surveys. So a key point here is that there is a potential to explore more on the NSO's uh, data sources. As mentioned also, we are working on metadata which will provide more details in terms of definitions, compilation uh, guidelines, and also references to international sources. Dissemination examples were, were mentioned already. I would like to emphasize that those do not duplicate the submissions to UNFCCC as more attention is uh, focused on numbers and statistics, including in the um, reporting uh, types, which are currently in, in quite narrative form. So what we plan to do next, those are the actions including in the report that we sent to the um, Statistical Commission. I would like to emphasize that we need to keep an eye on the ongoing developments of uh, international standards. For example, the CBD is developing a global biodiversity monitoring framework in which we are um, part. Um, there is also need to further widen the scope of the expert group on environment statistics as it becomes more and more apparent that uh, all those areas from climate change require more expertise to be involved. And so far we have almost doubled um, um, the participation. Of course, there is need to further explore ways to strengthen the, the relationships, the work relation, relations between NSOs and the authorities reporting to uh, UNFCCC. Those are a few of the important actions. However, the most important that I would like to bring to your attention is that we are planning to conduct a global consultation in the report we said March, but it's most likely that we will launch it in April this year. And besides uh, the substance um, assessing the fitness of the proposed indicators, we will also like to inquire what sort of activities are taking place, among them uh, certainly capacity development activities. Later, we are planning to analyze the outcomes of the survey and uh, prepare a report to the, to the 53rd session of, of the Statistical Commission next year. That's all I wanted to explain. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, Emil, thank you. Uh, thank you for the overview of the work of uh, the global set that we are developing in collaboration with the expert group. Um, in the interest of time, uh, we thought we could have a couple of questions, but there was some in the chat that I don't know if Emil, you are probably not able to follow. So I, I can either help and respond because I know what to say, or do you want to look at them? 
the one one thing I can just say something about presentations will all be made available. That's to Kadi it will be made available on the website shortly. Emil, are you able to look at the questions? Uh, do you, do you kind of, I can see the last uh, two, three of them, for example. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. So basically, uh, somebody you you can answer. I'll just quickly tell you. The somebody called Duja. I'm sorry, I don't know who they are. They said um, ask if the indicator are mainly based on the SIA and what about countries that don't have it yet. So you can answer to that one. And then um, from India, Banumati says that the multi-tiering system like that followed FDS and SDG would be very helpful. I think maybe I don't know if you talked about the tier, but you could say that. And then uh, whether the global set is available on the website. And who will it? Who will we be sending it to? Uh, okay, can I start perhaps with the first? I, um, no, I wouldn't say that the indicators are mainly based on SIA. SIA is of course um, relevant and taken taken into account in uh, several of them across all the areas. I would say, mm -hmm. for example, in drivers we have included uh, um, the. Um, recommendations to have GHGs inventories prepared according to uh, both the residence principle required by SIA and the territorial principle required by IPCC for which uh, Sandro will explain us further. We have also included indicators in the other areas uh, including from the latest developments uh, from SIA that is ecosystem accounting those apply mainly in the areas of adaptation, for example, protection uh, from storms because of preserved um, ecosystems like wetlands, mangroves, etc. So, uh, yeah, it's not mainly, but I would say um, to a certain extent, yes. What were the other questions? So the global, is the global set available and uh, will it, to whom will it be sent out? To the NSOs global? or ministries, yeah. The global set is not uh, uploaded on our website uh, in its full extent. We have recently ups, uh, updated our website with uh, quite uh, a lot of background information. The set we have uh, posted to the level of topics because, uh, as I mentioned, about a third of the indicators require further work. We could not yet uh, upload the full details there. We are planning to do that uh, uh, most likely at the stage when we are ready to launch the um, um, global survey. Uh, and certainly afterwards, we should be able to uh, disseminate everything on our website, including all metadata and perhaps additional guidelines. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, I think we should move on. There are more questions coming, so I Think, I'm sorry, I'll have to manage this carefully um, so not that we don't get behind. Um, I, I want to move to Vlad now. There was two questions I can very quickly answer so and then we can have discussion. Uh, there was a question from Mauritius about whether there'll be a manual like guidelines. Yes, we're having metadata underlying the indicators. And uh, from Rita from Finland, thank you. Uh, the kind of activities, yes, we know um, that we need to increase the you know, activity data and this assistance needed. We can talk about that in capacity department um, because I think that is something very important that we need to do. Um, so we would also be interested to see if Finland can help us in some way we get community data. Okay, I think we need to move on. Questions are coming, but I think we need to, we'll get stuck in a while. So I would like to invite um, Vlad Truska from uh, UNFCCC. He's, uh, he joined the UN Climate Change Secretariat in 2009, initially being involved in reviewing sustainable development projects for reducing GHG emissions in developing countries. And before joining the Secretariat, he worked for eight years in the Ministry of Environment in Romania as the UNFCCC National Focal Point and Director for Climate Change Issues. Uh, currently is coordinating the transparency related information systems and tools in the UNFCCC Secretariat, overseeing the development and maintenance of all systems and applications related to 
reporting, review, and storage of data submitted by countries. So over to you, Vlad. Thank you so much, Veena. I hope you can hear me. First. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me try to uh, share my screen. I hope you can you can yes. see it. Yes, Vlad. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So uh, first of all, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Now this is the 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 way to say it now in the in the current times uh, where we have so many people from. Um, from uh, many places in the world. Uh, that was the first thing to say. Uh, I'm very happy to to have so many uh, participants uh, and uh, especially a good share or a balanced share of uh, national statistical offices, but also um, representatives from the Ministry of Environment or agencies dealing with climate change and the UN and other organizations. Um, first, just to say thank you again uh, to you, Vina, and to UNSD for inviting us to, to speak on this event. It's already a practice now uh, to have these events in conjunction with the, the Commission, with the, the Statistical Commission um, every year. And I think uh, that in the in the last uh, four or five years, uh, we have seen uh, this, this process uh, moving forward uh, with the support of all these uh, events. So because of the, the, the wide uh, range of, uh, of um, experience and uh, interest from the, the participants, um, I have tried to focus my presentation um, on the issues related uh, to uh, the interactions between policy and, and statistics. Um, moving uh, a little bit uh, on on where we come from and what we do. Uh, that's a bit of introduction because not all the people in the audience uh, know about uh, maybe about what UNFCCC does and uh, who uh, we are. Again, this is the Climate Change Secretariat. We are a UN uh, Secretariat. We deal with the, the three major um, um, multilateral uh, agreements, the, the Climate Convention, the Kyoto Protocol and the Paris Agreement. And uh, we have a wide uh, range of, of mandates and, and topics that, uh, that we deal with. Uh, just to say that uh, we are um, supporting the negotiations, the intergovernmental process, but also a lot of, of, of support activities, training, capacity building, um, and uh, not uh, to the end, the analysis of information and data. Uh, you will see further on in the presentation uh, the uh, multitude of, of data that, that we, have, we receive. Uh, we talk about the nationally determined contributions lately, uh, all the transparency reports, um, adaptation communication, but also information regarding finance, technology uh, and support. And not uh, last, um, uh, a big chunk of, of our activities also relate to project-based mechanisms. Now, looking uh, at the, the, the link uh, and the, the idea uh, that is now um, over and over um, everywhere in the world, people talking about the Paris Agreement, uh, just an, an introduction of what is Paris Agreement and, and how it goes starting from the from the objective uh, about the long term uh, temperature goal uh, the climate resilience but also uh, the uh, financial flows and then looking at the two um, uh, sections or two main uh, areas of work on action on both adaptation and mitigation but also the means of implementation, looking on finance, technology transfer, and very important capacity building. Again, in terms of accountability, um, the probably one of the topics of, of uh, the, the and the link that we have with statistics, the transparency of action and support. Uh, but this is is somehow culminating uh, uh, every now and then with the global stock take. Uh, which is like an ambitious mechanism, and then the facilitation of the implementation and promoting compliance. The Paris Agreement um, is, is, is like the framework uh, document, and for that to be put in place, 
the, the parties to the, to the Paris Agreement uh, met in Katowice and managed to agree in, in Katowice on this uh, work program uh, for the Paris Agreement. And this, um, again, is, is a, a place where um, the, um, the information and the, the rule book of, of how to implement the, the Paris um, Agreement um, focuses on, which is again the basis to implement the agreement in a consistent manner uh, and trying to find the balance between the, the, the topics that uh, the main topics of the of the Paris Agreement. At the same time, um, the, the work program considers also the, the uh, differentiation between the countries and also the, the capacity building needs and the flexibility that is uh, needed for, for some uh, countries uh, in, in the implementation process. Now, moving on and, and looking at the, the policy side, of course, uh, there was not, uh, uh, I don't have a lot of, of time to, to move you to all this, this uh, aspect. So, uh, I thought important to choose two of them, which are transparency and adaptation. Uh, talking first on the on the transparency side, um, um, a big part of the of the Paris Agreement relates to the new enhanced transparency framework, which is is the the, the entire process of uh, um, uh, providing information to uh, to the Secretariat and to the other to other parties. Um, which builds the, the trust and promotes the implementation of the Paris Agreement, but also, as mentioned before, uh, allows for the flexibility of, of parties in terms of their capacity. At the same time, this is not something new. Um, everything that we speak now in terms of transparency is based on the current uh, measurement reporting and verification system. Uh, that uh, has um, already a long stance in terms of the convention and the Kyoto Protocol for developed uh, uh, countries and the, the process that, that run over the, the last uh, 15 years in, in some cases. Then we again speak uh, here about two aspects, the transparency of action and transparency of support with uh, each of them having uh, um, um, a specific information that, that is provided uh, in terms of the, the, the countries that, that are providing this, this information. If you look at um, uh, the, the transparency framework in a kind of simplified manner, uh, we again speak about reporting, review and multilateral consideration. These are the three main parts of the transpar enhanced transparency framework. And in terms of reporting, um, the, the main focus uh, um, is on the greenhouse gas inventories, the progress with the NDC uh, implementation, the support provided, the support uh, received, uh, and uh, adaptation, of course. Then looking at the review side, um, the, the idea of the behind the, the review process uh, looks on the consistency of the information that is reported by parties but also the progress and uh, uh, possible improvements and the, the capacity building needs of, of parties. The process ends with the, the multilateral consideration, which um, is, is a kind of a process uh, about interaction between, between parties uh, with online question and answer and also in session presentations and uh, live uh, Q&A. This is already happening uh, currently under the multilateral assessment and, and the facilitative sharing of views under the convention. So it's, it's again, uh, not something that, that is uh, new. Now also uh, looking on adaptation, uh, Rina, you mentioned, and also um, Emil, in our discussions regarding the global set, uh, there is this, this uh, permanent uh, request of, of more data on adaptation. And uh, again, this is coming from the, from the Paris uh, framework with the temperature goal, but also with the uh, global goal on adaptation but also the link between the, the Sendai framework, the uh, sustainable development goals and the adaptation under the, the Paris Agreement, looking um, under all these three um, um, processes on the um, idea of reducing the vulnerability and enhancing resilience. If we look at the 
adaptation, uh, the channels for information. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, this is not something new. The parties uh, or some parties, are, or most of the parties, let's say, are submitting already this information under their national communication, uh, which started with the developed countries in 99. Then uh, the developing countries also followed suit in terms of their uh, provision of the national communication, but also now lately under the, the Paris Agreement with the two vectors that uh, will be the main vectors uh, under the, the Paris Agreement, the biennial transparency reports and the adaptation communication. So you see under all this, uh, there are a lot of, of information needed in terms of adaptation that the parties will need to, to report under their obligations um, from the Paris Agreement. Now, again, looking in terms of the implications, and uh, this is something that um, in the last uh, four or five years, we have uh, again increased a lot our cooperation with, with UNSD in terms of these linkages between policy and statistics. First of all, these are some examples uh, to, to look upon. For example, on the, the greenhouse gas inventories, the countries will need to establish and report on their national entity that is responsible, uh, the entire preparation process of the inventory, uh, but also the way the data is collected, the, the choices that were made uh, be, uh, regarding the, the methods on IPCC guidelines and the archiving of the data for the time series. I know that that Sandro will be speaking after me on all this, so I won't dwell too much on this. Uh, Sandro has more uh, details, and and I think it's it's very good that also IPCC is part of this uh, event. Then uh, again, looking on the methodology uh, from the again uh, from far side, uh, the 2006 IPCC guidelines, the uh, sectors where these emissions should be coming for uh, from. Uh, you see there is a wide range of, of all sectors in the, uh, in the country. And the important thing that uh, I think I always keep saying that the official statistical information is uh, the, the, the main um, um, pro the, the, the um, statistical offices are the main provider of, of information because we deal with the with official statistical information uh, for um, calculating the, the greenhouse gas uh, emissions. Looking also on the institutional arrangements, uh, this is also an, an important part in terms of, of how the parties uh, will need to establish but also report on their uh, institutional, legal and procedural arrangements uh, in the uh, countries uh, for making sure that this reporting is progressing um, as, as uh, required and the countries are um, um, able to submit this information regularly as requested. So there is a need to have these roles and responsibilities uh, designated agencies, but again, this will not be uh, similar from one country to another because there is this specificity of, of different uh, countries and the national circumstances. So uh, whatever might be possible in one country to um, have, for example, um, only agreement uh, at the, the, the verbal uh, agreements between institutions to provide the data in other country, you might need uh, a very strong uh, uh, legislation to make sure that the uh, information is provided in time and with the, the, the relevant uh, quality. Now, all this information and all this 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 data that that comes to us uh, you will be asking what do we do with it and what we'll be doing with it we have a lot of, of tools and and it would not have been uh, me not speaking about our tools and uh, um, systems that we have to uh, deal with this data to manage the data i just stopped because of the time i just stopped to only one of it which is the greenhouse gas data interface um, you have the link uh, on the slide. Uh, this is the place where you can find uh, all the information submitted by parties. Uh, this is the data again as submitted uh, from the from the parties. Uh, you can also identify some. Uh, you can can do some uh, some queries. 
Uh, you can see uh, time series for some parties, for groups of parties, and so on. And at the same time, you can see some greenhouse gas profiles of countries uh, as shown in terms of their emissions and so on. We have many other tools that we do, we use in terms of reporting or review, uh, and this is in a, in a constant uh, um, um, enhancement process to make sure that, that we come uh, in, in front of the parties and the public in providing this, uh, these tools and, uh, and the relevant data. In terms of the of the the focus now, um, and and um, again, I will conclude uh, here because of of time with three major issues um, that I think it's 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 very relevant in the in the the current days. It's first the, our cooperation with UNSD, then the next steps in terms of the. Uh, negotiations and the aspects to be clarified, and then some some conclusions. First, on the cooperation, um, Rina and Emil mentioned about uh, uh, our uh, mandate from the Statistical Commission in 2018 uh, that uh, we were requested together with UNSD to undertake these joint initiatives uh, uh, to develop climate change statistics to. Uh, make sure that, that we increase capacity building efforts and to explore uh, the, the, the way to uh, make sure that, that the national statistical offices are more, more involved in the preparation of, of data uh, submissions to UNFCCC. And I'm not talking only about inventories, I'm talking, like Rina mentioned, about adaptation uh, and, and other areas. Um, in the in, in the time and, and looking at the mandate received uh, uh, since uh, 2018, even before, but but I think mostly after 2018, uh, we have been engaged with UNSD with in in a lot of events. Emil mentioned some of them, uh, like the expert group on environment statistics, and now in the in the last uh, years on the the global set of of climate change statistics and indicators. Recently, we have uh, provided a new report on climate change statistics, a joint report from UNSD and UNFCCC on, on, on this, the, our um, kind of reporting um, of the activities that, that happened in the, in the last uh, years. And this will be taken over in the, um, um, and discussed during the, the um, uh, Statistical Commission uh, that starts on 1st of, of March, if I'm not mistaken. Then looking at the next steps, um, again, people that are involved in the climate negotiations uh, know already that uh, uh, parties, they still have to negotiate, uh, and the deadline is the end of this year at COP26 in Glasgow. Uh, the, the missing pieces from the Enhanced Transparency Framework and this is not related with the substance, but mostly related with the the, the, the tabular formats and the way of, of reporting. So the way for parties to be able to report the information that they have agreed uh, to, to provide uh, already by uh, um, when when the Katowice um, work program uh, was agreed. So we talk here about the, the reporting tables for inventories, uh, tabular formats for NDC tracking, the NDC progress, but also for finance. Um, and also, again, uh, something very important, um, uh, parties need to, to finalize the negotiations on the training program for the technical experts. We have a lot of experts that we are working uh, with uh, I forgot to mention that the reviews that that are done under the the let's say the support from the uh, UNFC secretariat these are done by by independent technical experts uh, nominated by parties uh, by all the parties from, of the convention or the the Paris Agreement in in this case so uh, we work with a lot of technical experts and in the coming years we will need more experts to to join us then. Uh, there is a transitional uh, period, um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the current MRV system under the Convention and the Kyoto Protocol is still running. 
Um, and there, there will be a period of maybe two, three years in which uh, the, this system, together with the new system under the enhanced transparency framework, will run in parallel. So this is why we are in a, in a period in which you, we need to make sure that the systems and the tools that we have uh, for the current MRV uh, are also um, uh, transitioning. Some of them uh, will be put to sleep, but some of them uh, will be transitioning to the enhanced transparency framework uh, and uh, together with the new ones that will be built for the enhanced transparency framework. Then in terms of the, the support, uh, this is also one of the issues that the Secretariat does. Uh, we um, are working a lot on supporting the developing countries to implement the ETF. Uh, this process will be increasing in the coming years, um, but also uh, the idea of, of transitioning the IT systems and the training programs, as I mentioned before. To conclude, uh, there are a, a lot of uh, information, a uh, large amount of data that, that are coming uh, from the countries uh, to UNFCC. There will be even more coming uh, in the coming years, and uh, all this data is available on our website. Um, the, also to address the, the, the national statistical offices, there is a constant need from uh, data, the data needs from, from the statistical offices, and this will uh, increase uh, for sure in the coming years. And we know that this is complex and this requires expertise and resources. And again, this is one of the, the aspects that we are trying to, to uh, work even, even more uh, with the UNSD uh, in terms of making people understand the link between statistics and climate change data. Uh, but also the, the, the way to enhance the cooperation between the statistical offices and the national authorities uh, that are reporting climate change, like ministries of environment and agencies. This is one of the things that, that is, is core. Um, as you see, we have a, a, a good cooperation at the international level. Uh, it's not only UNSD, uh, we work a lot with FAO, uh, we, we work with, with UNEP, with uh, uh, UNDP, uh, with uh, UNECE. We have great cooperation in terms of, of data. And again, we are trying to, to make sure that, that uh, this cooperation that we have at the international level also goes uh, down to, the, to the, the national level where the statistical offices and the national authorities reporting climate change uh, should be uh, should have more more interaction and more collaboration. This is one of the things that we tried to do. There was just one example uh, in um, 2019 uh, in the CARICOM uh, region uh, to invite uh, in in our joint event with UNSD and UNFCCC to invite um, uh, representatives from from both sides, from NSOs and from the Ministry of Environment like uh, UNFCC climate focal points or, or people that are working on, on, on climate change so that they are in the same room uh, and, and they can uh, bridge this, uh, this uh, cooperation um, also at the, at the national level. I will conclude here. I might be a bit um, over time. And again, thank you for, for uh, inviting us again to speak um, at this event and for organizing this even in a virtual um, setup uh, now. I think it's maybe even better because we have uh, so many participants uh, than we used to have in uh, in-person events. So thank you again. Thank you, Vlad. Um, I really appreciate the presentation. I didn't have the heart to ask you to <laughs> go quickly because there's so much rich information. So I think I just beg everybody's indulgence. Um, I'd like to thank Vlad for this overview of the UNF C policy and data reporting requirements, the details of the enhanced transparency framework. Um, he also illustrated the links between policy and statistics, demonstrated various tools, and stressed the importance of involving NSOs. I think that's the, one of the key messages coming from UNFCCC that NSOs must be more and more engaged. And there have been some by uh, top, you know, points raised in the chat, but I don't know they're really specific questions. I think in the interest of time, if you don't mind, maybe we can move to IPCC because it's very related. And um, then um, Emil and 
that you could maybe just coordinate and try to answer maybe the bilateral ones if you don't mind. And then we have a session at the end for questions. So we'll try that way. Sorry, I think we should give Sandro also a chance now because it's also late for him. Okay, Sandro, please, could you? Hello, um, will you yes. hear me? Yes, Sandro, thank you. Okay, thank you. So I will try to be fast. I can introduce you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I need to yes, do that sorry, because that's protocol. I'm sorry. So Sandro um, Federici started in the year 2000 to work on reporting of anthropogenic emissions and removals and on accounting um, on for their changes across time. He has been working with Italian and European GHG inventories. Among others, he has been consulting for UNFCCC, the European Commission, FAO and the World Bank. And he's currently the head of the technical support unit of the IPCC task force on national GHG inventories. Thank you, Sandro. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. So I will give you uh, an overview of what is a national greenhouse gas inventory, which is the connection, which are the connections between a national greenhouse gas inventory and the statistical uh, um, work that each country is doing. First of all, let me start uh, with uh, about uh, who I am, who we are. IPCC is, is, a, okay, is a plenary uh, composed by all, almost all government uh, in the world. And it's supported by three working groups and one task force uh, on national greenhouse gas inventories, which is uh, where I am working. But I'm not in the task force, uh, part of the task force. I'm the technical support unit of the task force because for many uh, technical matter, organizational matter mainly. Uh, the, the, we support the work of the task force uh, on, on national gas inventory. The goal of the um, task force is to refine international agreed methodology to estimate greenhouse gas emission removals at national level and also to encourage the use of these, uh, of these guidelines uh, between, among the, the countries. So what is a, a national greenhouse gas inventory? It's a time series of national statistics. National statistics about anthropogenic green, greenhouse gas emissions and removals. So emissions and removals caused by the human activities, which occur in a year. So it's an annual, uh, an estimate is always annual. But an inventory is a, is a time series of annual estimates, because what is relevant is not, ju is not only the level of emissions and removals, but also its trend across time to see if we are uh, increasing or we successfully we are decreasing the emissions. And the emissions uh, are uh, estimated for the entire uh, economic activities and uh, across the entire territory of a country. This is the, the, the goal. So it is really a, a national statistic. Sorry, there is something. So why we have the, the, greenhouse gas, the um, IPCC guidelines? Uh, this is because um, uh, the, the emissions cannot be, in most cases, measured in continuous. So they are estimates. So are, are in most cases, are an, a statistical exercise where you combine activity data, we will see, and emission factor to infer the annual emissions that uh, each economic activity has, has come. Uh, to do so, so to have something that is uh, robust enough and comparable uh, among countries, the, 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 the climate convention especially, felt that the needs to have a, a, common and, uh, a common set of guidelines that all parties may apply. So, the IPCC guidelines are robust because bas based on, uh, on um, robust science, but uh, also, also provide uh, methods that are practicable by each country and so under any circumstances, circumstances uh, um, in the world. This is a very important concept, uh, the applicability. Sorry, and now I show you Sorry, I have some problem with my mouse. Okay, this is uh, the framework of the guidelines. These are the 2006 IPCC guidelines that are those uh, currently the most up updated. They have also two supplements. One uh, has been issued for the 
KP accounting. Then we have a wetland supplement to deal with organic soil emissions. And then now, just the last year, has been uh, released a, a, a refinement. So for some sections, on some chapter of the 2006 guidelines, um, IPCC has provided for up-to-date, uh, especially emission factors, and, uh, and the methodology. The 2006 guidelines are um, the implementation, the, the, the application of the, of the 2006 IPCC guidelines is supported by a uh, software, the IPCC inventory software, was launched in 2012 and keep to be updated um, continuously across across the years in order to increase its capacity in terms of a, of, a, of a methodology application. So at the moment, uh, the IPCC software, because the software started with tier one methodologies, so the basic method, IPCC, then has been already evolved for many categories to tier two, which is a, a more refined methods, uh, mostly based on country specific data instead of uh, on uh, default factors as the tier one. And we are working also to, to complete this uh, tier two coverage for all uh, the sectors uh, and all the categories in the, in the inventory. And uh, we have also an emission factor database, database which include all the IPCC default uh, emission factors, but also each year uh, following a procedure of um, assessment and approval by a dedicated editorial board, we populate the software with additional uh, relevant data for, uh, as, for emission, uh, in, in general, those are emission factors, but also all those uh, ancillary parameters that some of the IPCC equation uh, require to together with the emission factor to, uh, to arrive to the to an estimate. You will see. So, so the IPCC guidelines, uh, why the IPCC guidelines are so relevant now in this uh, new transparency framework? Because uh, this is the um, methodological uh, um, set of guidance that is to be applied by all countries under the convention, under the, its Paris Agreement. So, Developed the developing countries are both requested to use these uh, methodological guide, guidance to prepare their national Guinness gas inventory. Uh, how? The generic methodology to, to, to infer an emission is, uh, is this one. It's based on an activity data. So the, that give you the, the, um, a measure of a of, a, um, of the activity, me measure the magnitude of the activity, and an emission factor uh, that give you the intensity of the emissions per unit of activity. Th this is an example uh, here from the energy sector, which is always, of course, the, the most relevant. Uh, the amount of fuel that you use for, uh, for producing energy is the activity data. The carbon content, uh, is the, is the factor that determines the, the CO2 emitted. So depending on the level of oxidation, which very often is very high, uh, you may infer the, the amount of estimate produced by the combustion of the, of the activity data, so of the fuel. What is very important to stress is that uh, another very important parameter for each estimate is uh, its confidence interval. It's uncertainty. So the, uh, uh, the Greenhouse Gas Inventory is a compilation of, uh, of uh, estimates, but each estimated uh, emissions removal uh, is to be associated with this uncertainty, measured uh, in, uh, in its 95% confidence interval. And also, all, uh, an inventory is complemented by all the information needed to transparently uh, the the emissions has been a uh, has been a data collection. Now I will stress a little bit the data collection because it's uh, the most relevant uh, guess, uh, issue for this uh, for this event. 
And IPCC require, require IPCC make a good practice to establish a routine, formal routine with those data, with those organizations that collect data, in a, especially with the statistical organization, so with the statistical offices. It is good practice to engage all these, these data provider in the process of the inventory com compilation, not only in terms of uh, data pro provision, but also to make clear to the data provider what is the use of data. This is very important because uh, the data for the national uh, inventory, they need to have some characteristic, for instance, uh, to cover uh, the entire year or the entire territory, or, um, or depending on uh, the boundary of each sources, source category, which are the boundary for which the data is needed. And so the, the compiler, the data provider, sorry, should be very aware of the user in order to check if the data uh, he, he has is um, comply with all these requirements, or if there is any need to sometimes to modify the, the data collection procedure or the data analysis procedure in order to, to comply with the inventory requirement. Um, for instance, there are uh, some of the characteristics in data collection to be taken into consideration is uh, either to go for a census or a survey sampling. This is more likely, the census is more likely for the activity data. Um, the activity data have also the characteristic that they change year by year. While the emission factor, as we have seen before, you know, for the fuel, the carbon content of a fuel, has some variability, but doesn't change so much year by year, while the, con the consumption may have a significant impact. For instance, you know, last year, because of COVID, there was for fuel, there was uh, some significant uh, reduction. Or to go instead of a census with survey sampling, this is most likely, for instance, for the emission factor. You don't need to measure you know, all the carbon content of each single ton of fuel, but you do some sampling in order to calculate some uh, some robust uh, average values. We have accuracy, accuracy and precision are two very important uh, concepts. Sorry. Mm, accuracy in terms of that, uh, accuracy means that the, there is no any systematic bias uh, in the estimate. I'm sorry, I have... uh, Precision means that the, the uncertainty is reduced so far as practical. Pra, practical. So it's very important this concept of practicability of, in the application of the methodology. Then the uncertainty analysis. As I said, it's very important also to know the uncertainty of the estimate provided. And in this case, for the uncertainty, it's relevant to understand if it's irrelevant the uncertainty in the mean, so standard error, in order to evaluate uncertainty of the value, or the uncertainty in the individual, uh, so the standard deviation. A sample uh, just for data requirement, uh, this is a uh, fuel combustion activities. This is generally the biggest uh, part of the inventory uh, term. Of the activity data is the fuel consumption, fuel consumption state. This data is usually uh, pr um, a data available in national statistics, no? Consumption state, also because there are, the, these are data that have a fiscal uh, relevance. Other uh, values needed is the net calorific value in order to, to infer from the fuel the amount of uh, energy that, that each unit of fuel may produce, and then to infer from this and the carbon content, uh, which is here the amount of emissions uh, produced. Be aware that for non-CO2 carbon, uh, for non-CO2 emissions, it is relevant not only the fuel content, but also the technology used to, to burn the fossil fuel. So depending on which technology is applied, which uh, abutment technology also is applied, the emissions of uh, methane and N2O may uh, significantly change. So it's not just a simple, uh, equation of carbon content and the uh, net calorific value. And uh, I see that I'm a little bit uh, 
far with time, so I try to, to short a little bit. Uh, another uh, important piece of information in inventory is the so-called energy balance. So once you produce the estimate, you also compare the estimate with, uh, with this reference approach. The reference approach is based on a mass balance of uh, all, here we say, example uh, from the US inventory, of all the carbon in the fuel uh, uh, used, and all the, the carbon, you see, associated with each single use of the, of the fuel. There are energy, but also non-energy uses of the fuel. This uh, balance provide for a comparison to see if the, the inventory, uh, all the, the process has been properly estimated, or there is some, there is some like uh, gap. Um, as I said, we have a various tool uh, to support the greenhouse gas inventory, the emission factor database, as I said, the inventory. We have a prime, uh, primer for the use of the 2006 species guidelines, which is quite uh, informative. Uh, we have a report of S per meeting. Some S per meetings have, has been done for specific issues um, in the applicability of the 2006 guidelines. That is, for instance, one of the most, uh, I should not say that, but one that I recall well was the one on uh, the use of um, tier three methods uh, and um, inventories for, um, for the compilation of greenhouse gas inventory. We have a section of frequently asked questions. I Let me stress the, this, this final point and then the conclusion. Uh, data quality and data gaps. Uh, IPCC has a, um, guidelines uh, as a chapter, chapter two of volume one. Volume one is the um, volume uh, with the general uh, uh, guidance, guidance that apply to all uh, the sectors. Then uh, the IPCC has four uh, other volumes, one for each sector, which is energy, and um, the quality is to be checked in terms of completeness. So if the, the data that the, are you using cover the entire territory, cover the entire calendar year, cover, cover the entire population of that uh, specific category. The answer, again, what is relevant to know the um, confidence interval, uh, but possibly also the probability density function, because this is very informative when uh, in, in, in order to do error propagation. Um, the method applied for data collection, uh, and then the, the time series. Again, fitness and the consistency of the time series, because, because we need a uh, time series of gases, gases, efficiency, we need to have a Series, but we need also time that are consistent. Otherwise, you may have a trend in emissions and removals that is just due to the fact that the data quality is changed. So the two pieces of the of the time series are not uh, directly comparable to each other because they refer to, to different population in practice. Then in terms of data variability gaps, uh, we have another chapter, chapter five, which is about time series that provide information uh, how to ensure the uh, of Okay, then uh, if, if an entire time series is missing, of course, uh, then uh, you need to add to your statistical uh, system uh, a new data collection tool, uh, or sometimes, anyhow, as a remedial measure, also the expert judgment is allowed. Of course, it should be supported by um, information that, that explain how this uh, expert judgment has been um, made. And then, uh, in case of a single year or gaps within the time series, IPCC provides this Pleasing techniques as the overlap, the surrogate data, interpolation, the extrapolation, and those are all explained in chapter 
5 of volume 1, again, the volume of journal. Conclusion. So the quality and completeness of the inventories depend on the data quality. The data quality, of course, is the main uh, driver for uh, quality of the inventory. Uh, so uh, the data, the active data are mostly produced by the National Statistical Office. That's why it's very important uh, this uh, continuous uh, cooperation uh, between the National Greenhouse Gas Inventory team and the statistical office. And then you know, the statistics, now the many other keys of the National Statistical System. So very common that the National Statistical System is composed also by other institutions that collect uh, specific data. Uh, Okay, I guess, um, I guess they may conclude here. I leave you with three questions for consideration for, for your work. It's very important that the National Union's Gas Inventor is part of the National Statistical System. So, this is something that uh, is worth to. to is uh, is important uh, that uh, there is cooperation between the, Nastica, the National Statistical Office and the National Geographic Inventory in order to assess the database. It is also important that the two institutions uh, then cooperate in the integrating any emerging data needs. So the current system may, may be short of some data. It is important that the competencies that are in the National Statistical System support the National Geographic Inventory in setting this new data collection activity, if any, if needed. Thank you very much. And sorry. A bit more. Okay. Th thank you, Sandro. Thank you again. Very, very, you know, we wealthy uh, information and uh, excellent presentation. So um, we'd just like to thank uh, Sandro, who clearly demonstrates the importance of the IPCC in the guidelines and the supporting tools as well as how GHG emissions are est estimated using fuel combustion as an example. He also emphasized quality and completeness of the inventories depend on the underlying activity data produced primarily by NSOs, and this is where we come in. And that it was also important to engage both data producers and users in a very early stage. Um, I, I'm sorry with the time. Uh, so what is happening, I think what we should do is continue with the remaining presentations. We did allow a time at the end for more discussion. Um, and we are available to continue for you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes longer if anybody is available and interested to still uh, participate. Um, and I think with this kind of, uh, there, there is a question in the chat. I think we can ask um, Sandra to kind of reply bilaterally. It was just statistics for Mauritius, or at the end, we can do that as well. And uh, one thing I'm already like to say is I think uh, we would probably be able to schedule some other session, maybe in March, you know, just prior to the global consultation where we can have another chat again. I think this is, you know, might be very helpful for people so we can have maybe more of a dialogue or, 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 or discussion um, because it's all the presentations are really good. So I think it's important to also have them fully presented. So I'd like to move now to Tanzania. Um, uh, they are experiencing climate change statistics. And we have Ruk Ninja, who is the director for population census and social statistics at the Tanzania National Bureau of Statistics. Um, she has vast experience of more than 20 years working as a statistician in the area of data production, processing, analysis, and dissemination of official statistics. She's also a national coordinator for data for monitoring the SDGs, and she's a member of the interagency expert group on the SDGs, and she's also currently the chair of our expert group on environment statistics. And uh, Ms. Ninja also fully participated in the preparations of the draft uh, global set of climate change statistics and indicators. Um, Sandro, please uh, stop sharing your screen. Um, thank you. Um, and yes. Okay. It's okay. Ruth, can you please uh, share your screen and go ahead. 
thank you, Rena, and uh, thank you, colleagues. How are you doing? Can you see my screen, Rena? There might be some problem of connectivity. We do not see, but also we do not hear. Emil, can you see my, my screen? Now, yes. Thank you. Yes. We see, but I think there is an issue with connectivity. You can see it now. Yeah. Yes. Okay, you, thank you so much. Can you, um, can you presentation mode, Ruth? I'm sorry. Like the full screen? I think the problem of connectivity. What do you, what do you say? Thank you so much. It is okay. You can hit F5. Full screen. I do. In full screen mode now. Can you see Rena? Um, on our side, not yet. Full not screen. Yet. Hello, can you see? Yes. We can see your screen. Can you move to the next slide? Maybe we'll see if it's working like this. It's but you can hear. My suggestion is that uh, we screen the presentation okay. for Ruth. Hello? Can you hear me, Rena? Yes. Okay, Ruth. Ruth, uh, we can we take over your your and do the screening for you, and you just tell us when to move the slides. Hi, Rena. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Uh, can you share my presentation from your yes. side, please? Yes. So, um, Emil, you, okay, Emil will do it. Yes. I will Thank do you. that. And also, I would suggest you, Ruth, yes. to click on, on the three dots on the okay. top right mm -hmm. and click on turn off in, in incoming video. This will improve your connectivity. If you disable all incoming video, oh, you will you will speak okay. more. Okay, I'm sharing your presentation, and you can just instruct me when to click next. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, colleagues. I can see on my side. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I would like to thank UNSD for inviting Tanzania to make a presentation uh, to share experience on compilation of climate change statistics. Uh, next, next, please. Yeah, my presentation will cover mostly Okay, we're losing growth. Uh, six parts. Uh, apart from sharing the experience on compilation of climate change statistics, I will briefly talk on. Uh, Are you getting me? Yes, Ruth, we can hear you. Are we communicating right now? Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Next slide, please. Next. Okay, thank you. No, the pre previous one. <laughs> Good. Uh, under the slide one over the overview of climate change uh, in Tanzania, uh, as in other parts of the country, uh, climate change evidence and the impacts are already experienced in many parts of the country. 
directly in, in, in impact. in the, uh, the the human livelihood and the vulnerable population and uh, the basis of the experience when we were compiling the our first uh, climate change statistics report, report we noted that uh, data are generally available in the area of mitigation and the adaptation Next, please. Uh, next slide. I think it's okay, Emil, this one. I think she needs this one. Yeah. Ruth, are you there? Okay. Yeah. Hello, Irena. Yes. You're not here. You're not getting me. We can hear you now. Oh, sorry. sorry for this connection today. Um, I was talking about uh, the importance of climate change issues in Tanzanians' uh, uh, policies. We have uh, several policies, such as. Tanzania Development in 2025, we have the National Climate Change Strategy uh, of 2012, which provides guidelines on the, uh, to integrate climate change into sectoral policies and the plans. The country has also national environment policy and the Environmental Management Act. All of these have articles which talk specifically issues of climate change. But Tanzania has also ratified and is implementing various multi multilateral uh, environmental agreement, uh, which is also um, important on taking actions to, uh, to climate change. So such an inventor of policies is useful to identify their relationships, but also potential overlaps. The country has also managed it to, uh, to conduct mapping, uh, mapping and domestication of us into national policies which illustrate data availability and the, and the identify data gaps next please uh, yes I just want now to share experience on the global set of climate change in this. Um, Tanzania participated in the pilot survey, which was being co coordinated by the United Nations Statistic Division. And the main objective of this pilot survey was to test the applicability and availability of the data. And there was about 134 indicators. Another objective was to identify possible alternatives or additional indicators used in the country, so that can be used to improve the global set. And the procedure which we used at our country is to work in very close collaboration with the National Technical Working Group on Environment uh, Statistics and Climate Change Statistics. We worked together, we reviewed the indicators, we reviewed the instructions and the questions which was set by the UNSD, and we managed to identify uh, the data sources and the responsible institutions for each indicator. We therefore distributed the indicators to responsible um, to responsible uh, institutions for data collection. And uh, this uh, was done in collaboration with the National Technical Working Group team. We then uh, compiled the required information and submitted it to, to, to UN. A pilot survey was very useful for us because we learned uh, who is producing what and uh, which type of data is being produced. So it was like a starting point of preparation of a climate change statistics report. Next, please. And uh, the other experience, uh, Tanzania is a member and the chair of the expert group on environment statistics. Uh, the knowledge which again during the preparations or preparation of the global set uh, is very useful to inform uh, preparation of the climate change statistics uh, report at a country level. So 
uh, for instance, the participation in the preparations of the metadata template it was very useful for us uh, in understanding uh, different uh, um, types of indicators and the, the thematic areas of the of the climate change statistics. Uh, we were able to map the indicators to the national policies and also we ensured the consistency with the UN frameworks such as the FDS, UNFCC and the IPCC guideline or recommendations to facilitate the reporting of the climate change statistics in, in the country. Next. Yeah, I just now want now to, to share experience uh, on compilation of climate change statistics. After giving, getting the overview of the uh, climate change in the country and the engagement of Tanzania into global preparatory activities, specifically on the uh, global set of climate change uh, statistics and indicators, we managed to prepare the first uh, national climate change statistics report in 2019 and we disseminated it in 2020. And the preparation of this report uh, can be, uh, compilation of this report can be uh, categorized into four main steps as indicated in the slide. The first one uh, was the rationale and the gaps assessment and all these steps were done done in concurrent with the operational considerations. Uh, we, we, we were able to, to, to identify the problem as we were engaging into several uh, global activities and the domesticating and the mapping of the indicators to the national context. We were able to identify the gaps and the, uh, it, it was, it was it was important to, to prepare a report which will inform the government to, uh, to, to, to develop climate change related policies and programs and to take relevant interventions. And uh, we conducted the gaps assessment where we were able to identify uh, the indicators which we will be, um, uh, we will be reported in the, in, the, in the climate change report. And uh, we went on further into preparatory activities and the coordination where we were able to identify uh, those indicators and prepare data collection tools, preparation of the uh, manuals and instructions, which will support data collection, which is in the stage three and the processing. And the fourth stage was report writing and the dissemination. All these were done in close collaboration with the support from um, a national consultant and the GIZ support. And uh, we managed to conduct uh, several stakeholders, uh, user, producer, stakeholders workshops to build the capacity and uh, to compile the, the report. So the key success factor for this report is the partnership and the collaboration between the National Statistics Office and the um, uh, responsible uh, climate change authorities in the country. Next, please. Next, please. I have changed it. Yeah, there's a time lag. I mean, yeah. Yes, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, the key observation and the challenges uh, we experienced when we were compiling this report includes accessibility of climate change data. It was not easy uh, because um, uh, the climate change uh, data are produced by many players and accessibility of weight was not uh, an easy task, but uh, through the technical working group, which has members uh, drawn from the key ministries, uh, we had a very good collaboration on accessing data, but most of them uh, uh, were, were, were not complete. Some of them were in hard the copies is, it was a very good start that uh, we were able to identify those challenges and we can improve as we, we move forward. But lack of independent climate change policy, as you have seen in my previous slides, that is uh, the big challenge. 
We had inadequate capacity for production and harmonization of these uh, climate change data. And we also noted the duplication of work and the inadequate quality, data quality. We have lack of awareness and the knowledge on ongoing climate related processes. But we also noted it is important for countries to strengthen synergies between the UNSD, UNFCC to support the policy statistics interface at the national levels and encourage involvement of NSOs in data production to UNFCCC. Next, please. And uh, coming to key recommendations in the whole process, uh, we are recommending countries to consider using the draft global set of climate change statistics and indicators, which are in line with the FDS and the IPCC based base, base framework as a guide in development of their national level indicators. But also countries uh, to be encouraged to participate in global consultation of the draft set to promote representativeness. Countries uh, to seek uh, support for capacity development through funding mechanisms such as the Green uh, Climate Fund, Global Environment Facility, and bilateral donors. Partnership between NSEO and the stakeholders within the national statistics system is the key element to a success compilation of climate change statistics report. But also enhancement of uh, MOU for data sharing could support timely data submission to NSO and the enhanced data exchange uh, with the climate change reporting authority to UNFCCC. The those are the key issues which we said we could share, but also establishment of a separate climate change policy could be an important tool to facilitate more directly or effective climate change actions. Next, please. Oh, good. After having that an overview, uh, I just want to pose a question uh, based on the shared the Tanzanian experience in producing its first national climate change statistics report. Uh, will the other countries be ready to do the same? And uh, what are the challenges? And also, what are the opportunities available in your country in establishing an effective working relationship between uh, NSO and the climate change reporting? I oh, thank you so much for your kind attention and uh, sorry for the network challenges. Uh, over to you, Rena. Thank you, Ruth, and thank you for uh, persevering during this challenge. You did an excellent job. Uh, your presentation covered the climate-related policies and legal framework and your vast experience with the draft set of you know, global set. Um, she also demonstrated Tanzania's commitment towards climate change statistics by producing their first uh, climate change statistical report. And as I mentioned earlier, I think as far as we know, it's the second NSO in the world after starting Jamaica to produce such a report. So we really um, encourage and congratulate you, Ruth, on this. Again, uh, with the interest of time, I think uh, there was a couple of uh, you know, chat uh, questions so we can try to uh, respond directly. Well, not to you, Ruth, but just some chat. We can do that uh, bilaterally or at the end. I think we should now move over to um, Anjali um, from Suriname. So Anjali, start, please uh, start getting ready. Uh, Mrs. Anjali Deabro Kison Singh started working at the General Bureau of Statistics um, of Suriname uh, in March 20, 2008, and she's been responsible for the Environment Statistics publication since 2014. She is the focal point uh, for SDGs at the General Bureau of Statistics, the poverty focal point, and is part of various committees for surveys and censuses and contributed in various technical working groups. And she is also a member of the UN expert group on environment statistics and participated actively in the preparations of the draft global set of climate change statistics and indicators. So over to you, Anjali, please. Okay, can you see my screen, Rina? Um, no. No, okay, Wait, let me... Yes, now, yes, yes, oh, please. Sorry, I, I shot it. No. Let me just share again, I'm sorry, okay. No okay. problem. Can you see it now? Mm, not uh, 
yes and just put the okay. slide. The slide. Yes. Okay. Go okay. ahead. Thank you. So good evening, everybody, or morning or night for different people. So my name is Anjali Kishan Singh. And I'm responsible for the environment statistics at the General Bureau of Statistics of Suriname. And I will talk about Suriname's experience with the climate change statistics uh, questionnaire. So this is the content. I will talk a little bit about our experience, the uh, advantages and challenges we have during the pilot set, the data gaps that we have, um, the contribution, and the relation to the global set and also the way forward for Suriname. So the experience with the set of climate change, statistics and indicators, the first introduction to the draft set uh, of the climate change statistics was at the fourth EGS meeting in 2017. It was also part of the working group sessions from the last two meetings. Um, Due to the length and the complexity of the first draft, it took about five days to fill out, five full days to fill out the first of many versions of the questionnaire where a lot of data gaps were found. After good collaboration with UNSD, many revisions were made and also the columns were understood better. At early, in early 2020, the GBS completed the UNSD pilot survey uh, of statistics and indicators. What are some of the advantages we had with the set? Um, there is very good collaboration between the NSO and the various environment stakeholders, which has only improved while discussing this pilot survey of statistics. In August 2020, a selected group of stakeholders, mainly from the energy sector um, and the forest sector, were introduced to the draft climate change framework. And in December 2020, GBS launched their ninth environment statistics publication that contains circa 41% of the statistics and indicators from the draft set. Um, what's also very a good advantage is that the FAO has very has a lot of ongoing projects with uh, uh, the Foundation for Forest Management Production, one of our major stakeholders, and that because of that, there was a lot of data available on the um, indicators regarding goal 15, forest indicators. And also the UNDP also has various projects uh, that are environment related to the climate change. Suriname also already did two greenhouse gas inventories in 2003 and 2008. I know it's a little bit old, but we are now at a stage of preparing our third greenhouse gas inventory using the IPCC guidelines. And last year, I already provided a lot of data to the consultants responsible for this um, report. What are some of the challenges we have? Um, of course, I did not put it here, but COVID is a was, was a challenge. And uh, regarding the questionnaire, sometimes it was difficult to know what the indicator actually measures and what statistics were needed to compile the indicator. Um, there was data available on several statistics, it was also mentioned by Rina and uh, by Emil, but not a lot of data was available on the indicator itself. On one of the examples, for example, the freshwater um, resources and freshwater abstraction, there was only a data available on average annual and monthly, monthly precipitation. So statistics, we have part data, but not um, for the indicator. This is a case of many of the indicators. There is lack of data in Suriname on topics regarding anything that has to do with quality, water quality, air quality, soil quality. For, for those indicators, we have a big data gap. And out of the 134 indicators from the set, um, there was a data gap of 51 um, indica indicators slash statistics, I mentioned before, so something like 41% data gap. And <clears throat> The existing uh, climate change data is outdated, but it, people are working on it to update it. So those were the challenges. I'm not going to go too in-depth on the, uh, the, the data gaps, but I just want to show you guys um, for the drivers and the impacts. Um, there weren't a lot of gaps for the drivers, but the data was outdated. And for when we look at the impacts, we had data gaps on 13 of the uh, indicators. So like what well, I mentioned, water quality, soil condition. I'm not just due to time, I'm not going to go through all of them. 
When we look at vulnerability and mitigation, we had about eight data gaps for vulnerability. Um, for instance, food security could be done that data is not collected by us, and also data on um, buildings and infrastructure. And for mitigation, we didn't have a lot of data regarding the, the policies, so we do not need to work on that. And most of the gaps are in the adaptation. You can see 18 gaps. And um, that gaps on waste management, climate change monitoring, monitoring, et cetera. But I'm also not going to go into that. But this is to give you an idea of the areas where our most of our gaps are. Um, and we're going to look at the contributions to the refined structure of the drive global set. In 2020, in February until September, uh, GBS, contributed, uh, GBS was invited to contribute to the revision of the pilot survey based on its experience and work closely with UNSD and other countries in preparation of the seventh EGS held in November 2020 and the global consultation. It was the uh, second point was already mentioned um, by uh, Emil. The small group reviewed all the indicators and one main advances advancement was to decide to separate the indicators and the statistics into two columns to provide more distinction between an indicator and a statistics. Because if, if you don't do this, you will have even more data gaps. Um, clarity and transparency on what are the underlying statistics needed to be to produce an indicator, as sometimes indicators disguise what is actually needed for the compilation. An opportunity for all countries to at least identify and assess the statistics needed for an indicator in the effect that they can compile the indicator itself due to lack of data. And I already mentioned in November 2020, GPS also participated in the 7 EGS. So this is a slide um, what I want to talk a little bit about. Um, although Suriname does, does not, did not have a climate change statistics support yet, we do have our Suriname Environment Statistics publication, and I try to make a link with the data that we have available at this moment with the climate change um, uh, set. So as you can see, the publication contains 13 chapters. I'm not going to go through all of them, but out of these 13 chapters, I went through the drivers, impact, vulnerable mitigation, and adaptation, and I tried to check for, for how many of the indicators or statistics there is data available. So um, this is what, it, what I did. As you can see, there are many data gaps. And we, it, for every environment this is public, publication, we try to collect more data. But there needs to be more collaboration between the GBS and the stakeholders, especially for the climate change. And um, on the next slide, this is what I did for all the indicators, or for all the areas. And, um, you can see, for instance, for the drivers, there were there were 20 indicators and our indicators less statistics, and the GBS had 17. Impacts, you can see we had less of our impact, and adaptation, we had even less. So I tried to do this. The reason why I tried to do this, this will make it easier for the GBS if we want to compile our own, um, publish our own climate success statistics report, we have an idea of what we already have. So I'm at the slide now, the last slide, I think. So we will try to collect more data on climate change for our 10th environment statistics publication that is planned for 2020. And we will also try to provide as much data that is needed for the consultants who are responsible for our third national communication. Um, we have to try to collaborate more with national climate change focal points to promote linking climate change monitoring, statistics, and policy, as well as to benefit from funding from the Green Climate Fund. This is very important because in Suriname, uh, uh, UNDP uh, has funding, but you need to know how to get that funding. And preferably this year, if not maybe next year, we will try to publish our first climate statistics report. And we will keep participating in the UNNC Global Consultants on climate change statistics and indicator. So these were some of the questions and maybe we can go on later on arena. I'm gonna go in depth. And that was my presentation. Thank you. Okay.
Thank you, Anjali, for your very rich presentation where um, she described the experience of Suriname with a draft global set of climate change indicators and outlined clearly the data gaps. And uh, Anjali also talked about Suriname's important contribution to the development of the global set with us, as well as the relationship between the draft global set and the national climate change statistics as part of Suriname's environment statistics. I think that's really important, this particular slide you're showing here and the one before, to demonstrate the interface between climate change and environment statistics. And this is the first step towards producing a separate report on climate change statistics, which we know very well that Anjali is aiming to do in a not too distant future. So congratulations uh, for that. Um, it's now uh, 10 o'clock New York time. We were supposed to end now, but um, uh, because of the very interesting presentations, I think uh, we had to give them due um, justice. So what I'd like to do now is if for those who can stay maybe 15, 20 minutes or however long you can or are able to, we invite you to stay on. Uh, what I like to do now, um, I've tried to quickly note the questions in the chat. Some of them have been responded to, but I think first I'd like to give um, the flow back to the maybe the presenters. I think Vlad I know already um, asked because he can directly respond. So let me go first to Amir. We'll come back to ours later. Let Let's give our guests a chance first. Um, so Vlad, if you'd like to take the um, floor and uh, just respond to the things you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sure. You can hear me, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, I think I have six questions. I won't take uh, a lot of time, but uh, let's uh, scroll through them. Uh, the first one uh, from Banumati: If there are any plans to ask countries to report greenhouse gas inventories on an annual basis. So the developed country parties, they are required to submit the greenhouse gas inventory under the convention um, annually. Um, for the these parties, the developed parties that are uh, and also parties to the Paris Agreement, the inventory uh, is submitted as part of the biennial transparency report. And this will fulfill the reporting obligation every second year. But in the year in which the uh, biennial transparency report is not submitted, these parties will also have to submit a, a greenhouse gas inventories with the same scope and the same uh, as the one included in the BTR. But the report, this report will be reviewed through a simplified procedure. So the, the annual uh, reporting of greenhouse gas inventory continues for the developed uh, country parties. For the developing ones is once in two years for the, um, uh, under the uh, biennial transparency report. Then from uh, Michael Vartanian, um, there is uh, something regarding the modernization of the ways uh, national statistical offices publish uh, statistics. Uh, and this could help the greenhouse gas inventory compilers. And in many cases, the data is there, it is published, but it's very difficult to use because of the way it is published. Um, here, this is, uh, yes, one of, the, one of the scenarios. So it is important that the national statistical office is to be involved in the process at the national level uh, so that uh, statisticians understand early what is expected from them and in what format. There is also another scenario, and we have to consider that uh, when the respective information is not collected by the national statistical offices. And in a way, we need to be fair and understandable, even if I'm coming, let's say, from, from the other side. Uh, I've been in the situation uh, many years, almost 20 years ago uh, in my country, and you need to understand the limited resources in terms of the human resources, funds, experience, of the NSOs. And here it's the place where the designated um, agency that is producing the, the greenhouse gas inventory need to find solutions. There is a, a simple example. I'm not going to take a long time, but there is a simple example on this. Uh, and this is the, the fluorinated gases. Um, I, keep give, I, I keep giving this, this example because it's, it's quite simple. The fluorinated gases, they are very important for, the, for the, the, the climate change. And this is something that usually is not, this information is not collected by the, the statistical offices. But at the same time, these are extremely needed for reporting uh, the greenhouse gas uh, inventories. So uh, one of the ways to do that is to look in, at the respect, in the respective countries 
where this information resides. And in some countries that are not producing this, this gases, they are just importing them, uh, this information will be uh, found at the customs uh, agency or office. So there should be solutions to find the data in another place. Then uh, there was a comment from, from Rita Pipati from Finland regarding the UNSD, UNFCCC collaboration, um, and the joint work on setting up arrangements for activity data collection, uh, for G greenhouse gas inventories, that that could be useful. And also Kadir uh, mentioned the same thing. And this is something that, that we will be looking at. Uh, yeah, we need to consider the resources from both UNSD and UNFCCC, but definitely in the next uh, um, years, starting, let's say, with this year, uh, we are looking uh, as much as possible to, to make this, uh, this uh, uh, collaboration better and to uh, include the, the statistical offices uh, as much as possible into, into our uh, activities. Then uh, a message from, from Gosia from UNECE. Um, it is about the possibility of having formal guidelines or recommendations to encourage authorities to work closely with NSOs. Um, and this is not on the greenhouse gas inventories where we already have this and uh, it is embedded also in the IPCC guidelines, but in, in other areas. And uh, yeah, uh, Gosia, this is something to look for um, I am not sure about the, the formal uh, nature of it, but as a recommendation, definitely. And also to consider the general participation of all institutions on the Paris Agreement. And this is something that I wanted to point out. It is important to acknowledge that Paris Agreement is not the sole responsibility of the Ministry of Environment. Paris Agreement has ramifications on all the sectors, on all areas. And this is why even the national statistical offices should understand the, this, uh, this idea that uh, a country cannot report uh, what is requested under the Paris Agreement without the support of the statistical office. Um, one question from, from Julia from, from FAO uh, for both uh, myself and Rina uh, is the adoption of the global set envisaged to lead to the application for monitoring of the global stock take process. Uh, this is a very good question, and this is something that uh, that uh, I uh, discussed with Rina uh, many times. Uh, from from our side, we are hoping that the results of the global set. So the moment we will have the global set, and this will be, um, we will have the results, the outcomes of the global set from countries. This will inform the regular global stock take under the Paris Agreement. This is a very important process under the Paris Agreement. So it will be amazing to have the results of the global set of climate change indicators once in two or three years and see the trends over the years, uh, because it will be important to see the same kind of indicators and statistics over the uh, a longer uh, uh, period. Uh, the last question uh, I have from uh, Banumati uh, again, uh, if we, it's about the greenhouse gas data uh, interface that I showed in my presentation, if the estimates are reported by the countries or if we have a global estimate for all countries. Uh, definitely, um, we have the data as reported by parties. Uh, you can go anytime and uh, uh, see these uh, reports and the information that is presented there. But at this moment, or up to now, it was uh, quite impossible to calculate uh, a global uh, estimate um, from uh, like uh, aggregating all the parties because you know we had some limited information from from some parties in particular developing countries not necessarily it's not it's not their fault it was it was the way the process uh, was under the convention um, and uh, this will change definitely the um, as soon as now all parties will have the same requirements they have the same requirements under the enhanced transparency framework of the paris agreement and of course, with the support from us uh, and um, other institutions, with the capacity building and so on, we will uh, reach that, that moment when we will have uh, information from all countries uh, using the same methodologies 
for the same years uh, um, of the, the time series, because until now we had for some parties, uh, especially developed countries, the data up to the this year minus two years. So uh, currently we have data up to the years uh, 2018, um, which is verified and so on. In other uh, cases, especially for developing countries, we have data up to 2015 or up to 2010 or up to 2013. So there were these differences in terms of the, the latest reported year so that we could not aggregate uh, apples and pears. But this is coming and, and we are very eager to, to start receiving this, this kind of, of information under the Paris Agreement so that uh, there will be a moment when we will have this global picture uh, so that we can also uh, follow the, the, the trend. Uh, that's it uh, for me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you for going through the chat and, uh, you know, get, you, you got all the questions. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, maybe I could ask uh, Sandro if he would like to respond. I think there was a couple of things. Uh, uh, yes. yes, there are a couple of questions, but one has Thanks. been answered in the chat by Rita, so I have nothing uh, to add. The other one is about uh, validation of IPCC data and the uh, International Energy Agency data. We produce the uh, methodologies. We do not produce uh, estimates of greenhouse gas emissions and removals. We just produce the methodologies and we compile some uh, default emission factors that countries may use. So far as I know, no, for sure, the uh, International Energy Agency use, uses our uh, methodologies to produce uh, its estimates. They use the data provided by countries, and uh, so far as I know, they use also some of our emission uh, factors to derive from uh, the activity data provided by the country, the data and the net calorific value provided by the country, the estimate of CO2 emissions. So, but we don't validate those uh, estimates. I guess, I don't think I have more than this. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Sandro. I think that was it, um, yes. Um, I would like to see, I think in the chat, there was no question directly to Anjali. Uh, Ruth responded to um, something about the uh, difference between the statistics and the indicators, right? That was a question to Josai, so I think that should be fine. Thank you, Ruth. Um, Emil, do you want to, before we open for one more round, if there's other questions you want, did you catch the questions to us or I can help you if you need? Well, I see one question regarding if we are planning to start formal data collection, yeah. I would quickly reflect that we are not. Our efforts are to uh, assist UNFCCC to collect more uh, informed numerically communications, especially in those areas like adaptation and vulnerability that are currently going on in narrative form. Uh, I saw a couple of other things. Uh, how many, if there is big duplication between the statistics in the FDES and the indicators in the climate change, I would say no. Uh, Ruth clarified that uh, indicators and statistics are different things. Maybe I should just stress, an indicator is something that requires often multiple statistics. A statistic is something univariate. So the indicators are unique in the list. The statistics are not. This is why they are like 250. I had a quick look. It's out of those 250, some 60 uh, FDS statistics are required in the list. But that will change. That's not final. Uh, what else did I spot in the questions? I think that's it. Thank you. Yes, yes that's it. So yeah, you got the one on how many already covered. That's great. Yes, I think uh, that's sort of what I saw as well. Um, there's been, I mean, we're really pleased with this because I think we've been able to capture also some, uh, I would say, new countries that have not participated recently in the expert group. So we're very pleased with this because I think this way we can further engage. 
And um, I think to Banumati from India, you're asking about the global set to appear to be part of the FTS. I did respond in the chat, but I think it's helpful for the audience too. Um, currently not, because the FTS, we don't plan a revision right now, but we will do so in the future. So we will definitely consider, you know, to bring them closer together. But we are showing the linkages clearly, as Emil explained also. And when you see the draft set, um, when we sent it out for global consultation, you'll see direct linkages to um, the FDS statistics to uh, ECE indicators and to all the other things that Emil said, you know, Katowice, Paris Agreement, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and the Sendai framework as well. So um, I think that should be <coughs> clarified. Um, I think uh, just to reinforce the response that uh, Emil gave to Jerry Brady, um, no, we're not planning to collect data, and I think this is a uh, a good question because it also came to the statistical commission um, in 2018 and also to the ECE, uh, you know, expert forum uh, asking about data collection. And no, I and I would let my colleagues respond themselves, and I'll invite them just now to say something if they would like. But no, we don't plan to do any data collection because I think that's part, that's not the remit of, of, of the mandate of the Commission. But we are encouraging countries to use the set for their national purposes and we would like to promote harmonization in this way. We may start a compilation, not da direct data collection. So put together what is already existing, what we can find, you know, that is already being collected by other international organizations and try to package, repackage them. And I think this would also help uh, f uh, to UNFCCC for their planned, you know, global uh, stock take. Um, I don't see any <coughs> other things that we did not directly answer. Uh, if there are, please let us know. And um, one more thing before I <coughs> ask anyone else uh, for questions, um, I think we should uh, and I, I thank India Banumati for pro, uh, supporting this. Maybe have another. We'll decide how to call it a chat or forum or something uh, before the global consultation. Maybe we'll just focus on that when it's in shape to go out, so that we can help to maybe respond to some questions or, or you know discuss a little bit more in in, in detail. So I think I would like to see. Um, uh, uh, to anyone who's able to stay a few more minutes. So, um, Ruth and Anjali first, sorry, do, would you like to, as panelists, respond to any, there was no direct question, but anything that we have been discussing before I open it up? Okay. You can go uh, no, Rina, I have been excused. Okay. Okay, okay, fine, fine. I just wanted to give you a chance. Um, I, I'm, I'm just asking Gosha, uh, Michael, I, I'm not putting on spot, would you like to comment anything from your work or um, about the question from Jerry Brady in your perspective? Ah, Gosha, please go ahead. Thank you very much for giving us the chance and thank you very much for this excellent event. It was a real pleasure and a lot of interesting information shared as always. Uh, so uh, in UNECE, uh, we also do not plan a, any uh, coordinated data collection, uh, especially not uh, mandatory. Uh, and uh, now we are, since our um, indicator set was uh, already endorsed last year, we are going to be collecting examples of how it is used and if a country produces uh, their national indicator set, we uh, would definitely uh, love to know about this and promote these uh, initiatives through our uh, events and uh, materials and websites, but we are not planning a data collection uh, per se. Uh, and uh, I don't think uh, we have any other comments at the moment, so thanks again and thank you Vlad for your answer. Hey. Thank you, Gosha. Thanks for the supplementary information, of course, and we collaborate well with you. I see Michael has raised his hand. Michael, please go ahead. Thank you, Rina. And first of all, congratulations to this great event to, to you and your team who have organized it. Thanks to all the speakers. I was listening with great interest and learned a lot. Uh, just one sentence. I just would like to inform uh, that we have uh, this forthcoming uh, OECD UNEC seminar on SEA implementation. 
uh, that will be from 9, 10 and 11 of March. It's an online event, of course, and there will be one session which is called Using SEA for Policies on Climate Change and Sustainable Finance. So this might be of interest for some of you. I saw there were also questions related to the SEA and um, this could be uh, an, also an interesting uh, event uh, to listen in for, for many of you and also to delete the linkages between the different sets of environmental, uh, sorry, climate change related indicators and the potential use of the system of environmental economic accounting. Just wanted to announce this. Thank you. Thank you, Rina. You're welcome, Michael. Um, is anyone else who still would like to ask a question with Emil? I don't know who's asking questions or is it chat? Uh, Anyone raising their hand? No. Okay. So, Madhavan Palan, you raise your hand. Would you like to ask a question? I don't see. Um, no. Okay. I mean, there's any more question in the chat? Sorry, I can't do this at the same time. So. To be honest, I do not see other questions. I see okay. uh, a lot of thanks. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just had one question. I don't know if Rita, Rita, are you still there? Rita Ripati? I'm still here. Ah, thank you, Rita. Um, I was just wondering, uh, we know uh, Statistics Finland is one of the uh, very uh, excellent examples where you're leading in the work on emission inventories. I just thought to sh maybe if you don't mind to share a little bit of experience with some of the you know other countries on how this happened and how do you cooperate then with the environment ministry or respective institution? Well, I, I think it partly happened by chance, but, but I think it has proved to be a very good uh, solution that the national NSO or the NSO does the inventory. Uh, of course, in Finland, the energy sector is, is the most important producer of the emissions and, 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 and energy statistics is the main source. So from the beginning, there was good collaboration with the inventory and, and, and energy statistics. And, and when the, these national systems under the Kyoto Protocol were established, then there was a political decision that the statistical office would be the best place for it. And I think one of the reasons for this was that, well, the importance of the energy emissions, energy overall, and then also that uh, statistics, statistical offices are independent of policy. So that sort of ensures that the data is also done and collected and emissions calculated in an objective way. We work very closely with the ministries and, and uh, uh, research organizations. Uh, part of our inventory calculations are done at the National Resource Institute and the Finnish Environmental Institute, so and also uh, our technical research center. So, th so there is a lot of collaboration, and that's, I think, key. But, but in the end, it's it's the national statistical office in Finland who's responsible for all this work, not the ministries. Of course, if we don't do our work, then they will take over. But it it has worked very well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, thank you, Rita. No, it's a really excellent uh, example, and we look forward to further collaboration with you to encourage other offices, you know, to get uh, more involved. Um, I was just wondering if Jerry is still there, Jerry Brady, Ireland. Yes, I am. Yes. Okay, Jerry, uh, just a question to you. Um, you have a very interesting case in Ireland, and as, as I mentioned in. Uh, Cameroon, your unit in the National Strategic Office is is combined, right? Environment and climate change. Um, just curious, like how did you 
you know, achieve that because I think that's a very in interesting uh, approach to take because as we've been talking, the relationship between environment and climate change is, is very, very strong. And so maybe you could say a couple of words how this happened. At first it was environment and trade. That was back around 2014. And then as environment became more on a regulation basis, it became a separate vision. Mm -hmm. And then we engaged with the meteorological agency to key historical climate data back to around 1870. Mm -hmm. So for different stations, we are keying up daily data on the wind, on the temperature, on the rainfall, on the humidity, on the cloud cover for every day back to around 1870, 1860. So that gave us a big involvement. That's maybe a three or four year project. So that made us very involved in climate. But also we do energy and we do waste and forestry and fishery and water and some other areas. So we're wondering how can we get a simple name? And because climate was so important, it was the obvious thing to indicate to people that we, we wanted to be involved in climate statistics. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, Jerry. Um, is there anyone who would like to ask a question or comment or join in? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, I'm uh, Rita Rento. Yeah. I'd just like to know whether UN has a plan uh, about integrating all the frameworks that was uh, discussed. If not, uh, could you show the, how these uh, frameworks interface with one another so that the user of this uh, set of statistics relative to climate change would not be so confusing this would be the FDES in the CIA. Emil, do you want to answer or should I answer? Um, I do not have a very extensive answer. The thing is that what we are trying to do is to review all the relevant frameworks mm -hmm. and propose something that is more consistent where we do find possibilities to establish more consistent statistical guidance. Um, the way it sounds to me, <laughs> it's probably too broad to answer. Do you have other uh, details? What do you consider all, all the frameworks? We spoke about the FDS, SDGs, uh, IPCC, um, others related from FAO and um, other conventions. Did you spot something that we might have missed? Yeah, uh, let me just uh, share what we did earlier because uh, uh, prior to what we did with the revision of the FDES framework, we deal with the climate change indicator and somehow when we were about to finish the uh, revised uh, FDES framework, that is I, I was working with uh, Rina and her group before. And we noticed that uh, we can actually plug in the climate change indicator in the FDES. <laughs> So I was wondering whether uh, you have now come up with something like uh, integrative framework or uh, something uh, chart showing how this uh, framework interface with one another. Yeah. I mean, maybe I pick this okay. one. Up. Yeah, no, so I know Raimundo he used to be part of our expert group. Uh, Emil doesn't know him, so that's uh, maybe I can explain. So yes, Raimundo, yes, with the FDS at that time, we had this chapter five, which is the cross-cutting right application of the FDS, and we had climate change as an example. And then, you know, as climate change started getting more important in terms of statistics, you know, we, we decided to embark on this, uh, you know, more depth in-depth work um, and alongside the ECE, as we been explaining. So I think you've not yet seen the draft set. You know, Vivian Ilariana from the Philippines has been part of the group now. So in the draft uh, set, you know, we are clearly showing all the linkages. I mean, 
each of these frameworks and policies are, are, are determined from different UN mandates, etc. So you have the Sendai framework, you have the SDGs, you have uh, the um, UNFCCC conventions, the uh, Paris Agreement, Katowice, you know, there's a lot. But what we are trying, what you will see, and of course the FDS, you will see the, uh, all of them being illustrated clearly where there are linkages. So that's all we could say. I don't think you can make one single framework, and even the CIA will be represented, you know, as appropriate through, uh, you know, through the indicators and the metadata. So I think once you see it, it should be a bit um, easier. We're happy to share with you, or you know, we can discuss with Vivian and yourself any time, right? To to go into more, more details. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I think we can probably close, right? Is there any other? Uh, Pauline, I wanted to ask you if you're still here. Pauline Leonard, you're still with us? No. Okay. I just wanted to give Pauline. Yes, Leonard. Rina, I can ah. hear you. Okay. So, sorry, Pauline. I just, if you would like, I'm sorry, I meant to ask you if you like a couple of minutes to speak a bit about the plan project since it's going to be on climate change and disasters, if you like. Sure, thank you so much, Rina. Um, so basically, um, ECLAC, with, in partnership with CARICOM and UNSD, um, is implementing a project to support um, Caribbean member states and SEEDS in particular to um, produce and use uh, relevant Caribbean um, climate change and disaster um, statistics. So the project will um, have th a three year duration. And um, and we hope to have everyone on board. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome, uh, Pauline. Um, okay, I don't see any more questions or chat. So I think we have we've taken a half hour extra. So I don't think we should continue for too much longer. Um, just like to say thank you to everybody. Thank you for joining. Thanks for your questions. As usual, apologies that it's not always as interactive as we could have, but uh, we, we know there's a lot of information to be shared. So um, we will try to organize something, uh, you know, soon and, and, and keep you um, informed. Okay, so, so thanks again to everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you, Rena. Bye. -bye. Thank you so Thank much. You. Bye.